Tell me when we're live. Yep. Just waiting. Nothing come through yet. It says it's live. We're going no, live. Yeah, we've not we've not had anything yet. Time we are live. There we go. Yeah, I'm on it. There we go. There we go. We're live. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> how are you? Yes, I'm doing good. How are you today, Mr. Morrison? I'm not happy. I'm not an happy man. Why? What's wrong? Well, apart from uh, the world being on lockdown, which, you know, we're all suffering that. But it's the little things that are starting to really frustrate, like uh, Eurovision. What? I love Eurovision. Every year. Someone has to. I know, but it's like the original. It's like X Factor, Britain's Got Talent. It's it's the grandfather of all those shows. It's the pinnacle of bad taste. And over the years, it's just got cooler. From and cooler, the... I think, is a pretty strong word to use. <laughs> Um, there, Stu. I well, was say, I'm not sure that's how I would describe it. So this year, let me let me prove how cool it is. This year, Iceland, Iceland, yeah. Think about things. I can't even pronounce the names of the, the people. Dayo Gognamagio. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, too, it's yeah. I don't know if it's the guy or several of them or one of them. I've got no idea. But anyway. That person, those people, uh, think about things. It was a great tune. Look it up on your Spotify. Um, or the eminently cool Little Big. If you've never heard of, you've heard of Little Big. No, I haven't. <sighs> Some kind of education was missed out with you. <laughs> <laughs> Little Big. Right, go to YouTube, find Little Big. OK, I promise you their videos are worth watching. Hilarious. And the one I for will... the one for the, the Eurovision this year, Uno. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's all I'm going to say. It's got a fat body popper. How can you not? <laughs> how can you not love that? How can you not love that? Oh, dear, Stu. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> OK. All right. You're obviously not a fan, so I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. So big news in the Borden dinosaur mystery. Oh, yes. So uh, somebody put me on to Dino Lady. Oh, that's exciting. Yes. Her name is Sarah, and we're in secret negotiations about getting her on this show. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what this country celebrity. needs. <laughs> local celebrity in a dinosaur costume. I think we should do it with her in the full dino. I don't yeah. know how the sound will come out, but we she's got to remain well, anonymous. Yeah, we'll figure that out. That's it. We've got to protect our identity. Protect the the, the superheroes of this country. <laughs> America's got Superman. We got Dino Lady. Exactly. Fabulous. Exactly. So yes, uh, after DJ Darren, uh, I got an anonymous tip off of who the mysterious Dino person was, and uh, we've been in secret negotiations. We're having a conversation this afternoon, so that should be Lovely. good. Lovely. Very exciting. So yeah, it's all go here at Signal Radio Central. Um, <laughs> So, change the subject again. Cards Against Humanity. Love it. You've played Favorite it. game ever. Yeah. They've released it for free online. That's awesome. It is awesome. Well, it is awesome if you're that kind of person. I mean, yeah, you do have to have a certain warped, dark, <laughs> probably going straight to hell kind of sense of humour. But well, it's still you know, good fun. Yeah. So, you can download the entire game pack and you can print it out at your will. They even give you instructions on, on how to get it printed out to the best quality and chopped up and all the rest of it. But uh, yes, there, there's if you don't know it, it's a bunch of fill in the blanks kind of statements. And you have to fill it in with a card from your deck uh, with um, the worst, most terrible, most inappropriate uh, statement. OK, yeah. so so some of the questions or some of the statements is. Um, hey Reddit, I'm blank. Ask me anything. Okay, quite quite innocuous. But you can choose from the questions of uh, you can choose from answers such as uh, necrophilia. Exactly. It's definitely a certain type of, of <laughs> sense of humour. Exactly. I must say, I do enjoy it. It's I, good fun, especially when you get old people to to do it. 
And look who's joined us for the conversation. It's, it's today's guest. He's only gone early. He's gone early. He's a keen one. He's eager. Look at him sat there in front of his, so his what's that, Gilbert and George artwork. He's muted, but he's about to unmute himself. He is. There, there he is. <laughs> he is. It's Mr. Hello. Rob Alliston. Woohoo! Oh, hello. Hello. With, with lockdown hair. With lockdown hair. Don't get your hands on lockdown hair. We've all, you know all got that. Stuart. We've all got that. Stuart, I was just going to say, can we go back on that conversation you had off air? Because um, Gareth claims <laughs> to have had a haircut that it was done by a handyman. And, 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 I, and I would just love at some point to see this handyman's haircut that was done by his father. And, and he dips into that tool chest where there's a hammer. And that was it, yeah. Pliers. He did and it with the drill, the sander. That's the what drill. <laughs> and then, and then, so out of that comes this amazing haircut, which is hidden behind your cans and your rather trendy cap. Exactly. Yes. Well, the the the, the reason is it's not a it's not a marvelous haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you surprise me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't wish to cast aspersions on your father's handyman in handymanness, but yeah. uh, it doesn't He's translate well into being a barber. Yeah. Forgive me. That's a bit ageist, Gareth. How old is your father? He's probably younger than uh, me. How old is he? Sixty. Okay, he's a few years older than me, which is okay, but you shouldn't disrespect your father. I, I bet you, I bet you he's, he's, he's on Zoom right now talking to his mates, his handyman mates. Oh, well, I mean, if he, he knew how to work, if he knew how to work a computer, then definitely. But... <laughs> I remember one year we went to visit my grandfather who lived in Nottingham, and my dad turned up, and my grandfather was uh, his regiment's barber. And he always used to inspect our hair. And my dad had never had a haircut before he went. And so we got there. And my father, was, my, my grandfather was like, well, it was grumbling about it being just like messy and, and looking like a hippie. So he forced my dad to sit outside and got his old regimental clippers and clipped his hair. And my dad was just screaming because it was like plucking it out. They were so blunt. <laughs> I could just imagine... Just imagine Gareth going through that with his dad. It was when he got the he got the electric sander out. That's when I got worried. <laughs> Put the spirit level on the top. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we, we've got to see it at some point. I mean, this is, if, if you've got that build up to a scenario, you've got to at some point let people vote or somehow encourage you to take <laughs> the cans and the hat off and, and show us. Reveal to the Stuart. Reveal to the it's nation. Up. <laughs> not gonna happen. Not gonna happen so this is the feistiest start by a guest <laughs> that we've had and and hats off to you sir would you please Pleasure. introduce yourself to our listening public they may not know who you are we know who you are you're a local uh i, I, I dare to say the word celebrity somebody uh, who the the community would know but for those who don't know Please introduce yourself to the wider community after your rousing, ribald entry uh, to this conversation. Go. Uh, my name is Rob Alliston. Uh, my middle name is Paul, which not many people know. Robert Paul Alliston. And I am director and have been for nigh on 10 years of the Phoenix Theatre and Arts Centre in Bournemouth, East Hampshire's only full time professional theatre and arts centre. And we've had a blast over the last 10 years with some amazing people coming down there. Yeah, I, I've been <laughs> down regularly. Uh, I've been to the beer festival. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seeing, uh, um, oh, what's his name? Thomas. Uh, Mark Thomas, the comedian. Yeah. Uh, a few yeah. times. A few top comedians. Yeah. Some great, yeah. great shows as well. Um, Do you want some news? Some hot news? Yes. Right now. Yes. News, okay. Well, don't overplay it. It's not that exciting. Oh, okay. All right, yes. Um, so we, we are closed, sadly, which is not great. But but we plan to reopen with the beer festival on the 26th of September. And the news is I've spoken to the brewers, and they are brewing beer as we speak. So brew beer is being made right now. So all being well, we'll reopen on the 26th of September with that beer festival that you were talking about. And it, and it's one of my favourite. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 one of my favourite events. And um, 
it, it's joyous sort of meeting 200 people who I vaguely know who, who, who let their hair down. Sorry, Gareth. <laughs> who let their hair down. And, and just basically smile and just talk the most inane talk for, for hours and hours, fueled by some of the best beer in the world. Absolutely. It's fantastic to see the deputy mayor, the mayor, the, the leader of the local council, all, all rubbing shoulders with the rest of the people uh, and just having a drink and a laugh. I mean, and we need a T-Rex. I have to say, that what we do need, though, is, is more animals. We need we to get enough. We need to get the dino, dino lady. So needs, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe when you uh, speak to the T-Rex, um, how would they like to open the beer festival? <gasps> I mean, that would be, yes. What a coup that would be. That outside be broadcast, awesome. outside broadcast, we have a T Rex opening the beer festival. I think that would be the best way forward. That and would please, literally be if awesome. If you can make it happen, I, I would happily facilitate it and provide whatever the green room needs for a T Rex, what, whatever that, whatever their rider would be. I'm, I'm trying to think what a rider for a T Rex. It's got to be meat based, doesn't it? It's got to be something to do with animals or, 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 or something. But I would provide. White jelly beans, I would provide carefully, um, um, ha not hand reared mice if that's what they want, <laughs> whatever that is. That's the one. Um, so if, if that's if a T Rex wants to open the, 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 the beer festival, then, then I will, I'll make it happen. Fantastic. September. We might have to get, adapt a pair of those large, oversized scissors for a, a T Rex, <laughs> to yes. yeah, but it wouldn't work, would it, Stuart? Because they can they not? Is that why they're oh, extinct? They can't sort of get their hands together. Maybe that's and, yeah. yeah. That's why yeah, they're not yeah, they're yeah. not used more often because you know they can't they can't get their hands on the scissors. But yeah. You know. well, exactly. But it's great for me because if I, I don't like giving away beer, so the T Rex can can might, might struggle to hold the, 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 the pint in their hand. We'd have to get a really long straw. Straw. There we go. Technology wow. saves the day. Wow. <laughs> Can you imagine a mildly inebriated T Rex at a beer festival? Bouncing off the world got any weirder, I think that would be it. A T Rex, yeah, of whatever it might be, slightly inebriated, <laughs> and talking to I don't know who could they talk to? Um, the local MP, perhaps, or maybe um, who could it be? It could be the local town councillor or the mayor, but I think I think that's got to happen somehow. In my life at the moment, and as weird as it has been for the last nine weeks, you've now started to open up my whole kind of thinking. But what would really make it, uh, um, finish it off for me? It'd be the highlight of my career if I could make that happen over the next couple of months. <laughs> Thank you very much. I might not have achieved much, but I had a dinosaur open a beer festival. Bang, top line of the CV. There we go. You know what? We're on the edge of uh, the edge of the arts now, Stuart. I really think we are. You know, you, you, you can't, well, you know, you, it's all happening away in Lamborn, and, and, and that, that has just about nailed it for me. T-Rex, opening the beer festival, or not, or with specially adapted cheers, maybe, or with the help of another person, which could be you two, and then we ah. take through into the, into the beer cellar, and then we pour them a pint of beer, and we just encourage them to get on with it, and then come back periodically to see what state they're in. Because, of course, we have got live music, too. Yes. What yeah. about a T-Rex? singing their song the extinction song or, or something yeah a song about jeff goldblum and how he got away in the film <laughs> or, or any like or any song by t-rex yeah oh oh seamless sure. it, it, you're right if i can, yes i can t-rex can't do this but we've just linked Chunk. any yeah. song by t-rex via t-rex on, on <laughs> saturday the 26th September would outdo everything in my life. Do you know what? It might be better than four nights of Alan Carr. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It might be. It, it, might, it, it might go nowhere, but I think we must make it happen. And, and I will make it happen with you, Al. Yeah. Fantastic. Excellent. So What a great start to, to <laughs> talking in Namely. I feel like, you know Test Match Special? If you're a cricket fan, yeah. oh. you could be talking the rain about cakes, and, and I could talk about hairstyles <laughs> we, we could talk about about manicure how, how do t-rex do they how do their nails stay sharp i mean do they manicure well, them or do they just bite them? rub them against, well, they, against flint perhaps maybe that's what they do we could talk for hours 
and, yeah. and you didn't ask me to appear to do this. I should be talking about something a bit more constructive. Test but match special. Test match special is without doubt, even if you're not a cricket fan, worth yeah. a listen for them filling in for like 20 minutes whilst the team confers and changes ends and then they have to have a conversation and they've got to feel 20 minutes on the radio with no visuals and keep yeah. people marginally interested until the moment the sport starts again oh i mean you know hands down the the the, the best best presenters of anything ever you'll ever see top Gareth, have, have top you, work have you seen the, 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 the famous one um is is the is Michael Holding and and uh, the Dennis Dennis Willey. His, 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 it wasn't Dennis Willey, was it? But it no. was um, I forget his first name. It was Dennis Lilly. It was Dennis Lilly. Yeah, was but it? but you're talking about Willie, and I can't remember his first name. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> his his son is playing cricket now. Yeah. This is kind of what old men do as as, as well, Gareth. Is oh, sorry, Stuart, with similar age, they kind of start a story. And it kind of goes nowhere. But, but I, I, <laughs> so this is where the, the young chipper, you know, the, the, the cool one, the baseball cap, comes in and gives us those answers. But it was it, it, the punchline, wasn't it? Was the bowling, the no, bowlers, the batsman's holding, holding. the batsman's willy. Batsman's willy. <laughs> and, and they're real people. And <laughs> and it was done by Brian Johnson. And if I remember, oh, bless him. I mean, he's, 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 he's gone now, bless him, uh, um, Brian Johnson. But but I if I remember um, it was it was somebody in the in the box said it and then stepped back in the expectation that it would just disintegrate into what it did and if you like blank space silence on air all you can hear <laughs> is those childish public school titters <laughs> ringing around the booth and, and you know. And, and if I remember, oh, John Arlett, sorry, again, John Arlett is, um, was, was the great... Jonas. Oh, the great and, and Jonas. Jonas. Jonas was very serious, and he didn't like people playing up. So I now remember that, that when this all went wrong, um, <laughs> um, it made it worse that John Arlett was, was, was kind of against these childish <laughs> schoolboy kind of things. And all you hear, and you must listen to it, is just the whole thing as it builds up, and it builds up at such a great speed. And then all you can hear is just nothing but but laughter, and it's 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 just it is. test match special cakes. And the link with the Phoenix was we had Henry Blofeld here a couple of times. I don't know if you know this, but we had Henry Blofeld with Lowers, yeah, who, who, is, who is kind of the last one of that kind of that school. And he came to the Phoenix um, twice, I think it was, and and he was just his stories and his story about Bond. And how his name Blofeld and linked with the baddie in in, in 007 um, w was a joy, and, and I feel we're, we're making up for lost time. But that ability to get those lovely old stories now is is kind of drifting away a little bit, and it, it, it's sad in a way because characters, characters for me is what it's all about. And if it's a character on the stage here, or a character being a T-Rex at beer festival, or whatever, I mean, I mean that that's what something we, we we've got to retain somehow. I think, I think for me, there are two things that seem to be slipping. It's people's attention span, the willingness yeah. to listen to a 10 minute story for the payoff. Yeah. And the British eccentricity, we've homogenized as a nation and this just kind yeah. of blanding of why can't we celebrate the eccentric, the daft, the silly and just laugh at yeah. a person in a dinosaur outfit without any yeah. other thing than it's just funny. Yeah. yeah, you know, people ask me about the suits. Why the suits? Why not? Life's too short to be boring. <laughs> you know, if you've got a choice of a rack of brown, yeah, uh, what does that say? But if you can mix it up with a bit of fun and make people put a smile on their face, my neighbours always smile when I go out to the car, wave and hello. I mean, it just breaks the ice, doesn't it? Yeah, and plus no one would ever call you boring, Stuart. Yeah, that's not a label that I wear easy. No, no. <laughs> How big is your wardrobe? Have you, how many suits? I mean, I've seen a few. Yeah. How many suits? Have you got one that's like black and white with instruments on it or something? Or I've got one that's white and black mustaches. I've got one that's black with white uh, scientific notation. But when you get okay. closer, it's fake scientific notation. In fact, one of it is like pizza, P1ZZ <laughs> times A or something. It's right. ridiculous. Um, 
I've got one that's black with white stars. I've got one that's a test pattern. I've got about 18 suits now. Wow. wow. Yeah. Do, do you like being called a character? Because clearly you are. I mean, can I, can I feel like we're mates now. Can I call you a character? I, I, I yeah, I don't care, really. <laughs> I really have. What do you think, Gareth? Am I in trouble now? That, nah, you're fine. You've I've been called a lot worse. I have been called a lot worse, <laughs> and I have no shame. I really, when when they were handing out shame glands, I, it was my day off, because I really don't have, I get a phone call from a friend, and he said, I've asked everybody, and you're the only one I know will say yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the answer is yes what do you want me to do so yeah i've uh, been in a few situations that i've gone how did i end up here it seems so linear and yet it's gone so badly wrong <laughs> that could be my title of my autobiography how did i get here <laughs> yeah yeah many many of my stories end up with uh and yeah how did i get here <laughs> do you know what can i tell you the one about um so when Alan Carr was first here, when he first came here, uh, and that was kind of one of the... So we had a run of, like, Joe Brand and Alan Carr. It was amazing. Right? Yes. And it was just fantastic. And, and Alan Carr came along, and I, I, I've never met the man before. And, um, <coughs> I'm always very nervous about meeting people because I, I, I don't... We're such a small little theatre. We've no right to get the people we do. You know, it's a shame that we've had to close down because Oma Jalili was due to come back as well, yeah. which, is, which hasn't been announced, and, and sadly now has been cancelled. But... But with Alan Carr, it was like, you just don't know. You, you, you don't want to say the wrong thing sometimes. But So what happened was a parcel arrived with his name on it. A, 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 we call it the box office. Well, you both know it's, it's a front store with a, with, a, with a little kind of table. That's our box office. But it arrived and it said Alan Carr, um, Phoenix Theatre. And, and, and I've been around long enough to realise that you have to be so careful. You know, it, it could be anything, couldn't it? It's a very uh, um, obscure reference to Gilbert and George, who created works of art with, with certain materials that a T-Rex might deposit at the end of the <laughs> bit. That was their thing without saying a word about exactly what they did. They were famous for a whole routine around, around we can say it, around poo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> the poo. scatological. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm caught up. So this parcel arrived and I'm thinking, oh man, this, this could be anything, but but, but I've, 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 got, I've got to give it to him. I have to, really. Um, so I, on the night, Alan came and very polite, said hello. And I said, listen, this came to you. And, I, and I'm really sorry. I, I, I don't know if I should open it. But he said, give it here and we'll do it. So we opened it together and look inside. Uh, and it was, it was bandanas. It was a couple of bandanas that, that somebody had made. Now, I wish I could remember the chap's name, but I know he still works in Tesco. Um, and... Alan Carr was delighted because they were made for his dogs. Ah, and he brought, again, this is the eccentricity of, of us as an island nation and all that. He had actually brought his red setters along to the Phoenix and they were upstairs. Yeah. So th this, um, th th this lovely That's fella, and I'm sorry, but I wish I knew his name, um, had, had made these bandanas for the dogs. Was that Leroy? Was that Leroy? Was that? Was it Leroy? No, no, it wasn't Leroy, no, but it was another tall chap yeah. who works kind of in, in, the, in the kind of chill area and he's very tall. He's probably my bill. Uh, okay. um, I apologise. I, I wish I knew his name. I, I, when I see him next, I will. He's bound to be watching, isn't he? He's yeah. bound to be watching today. It's me! That's me! So, so, the, the, so we opened the parcel, this is Alan Carr, and inside are these two handmade bandanas for the dogs. So... I said that he's that the fella's in watching the show tonight. So Alan then marches downstairs. The show hasn't started, by the way. He marches onto the stage. I bring the lights up. And, and Alan says, who, who made these for, for my dogs? And a rather sheepish hand goes up at the back of the auditorium. And he said it was me. And I, I don't think he came onto the stage. But then Alan called the dogs down to the stage. Bear in mind, the show hasn't started. You know, <laughs> nothing has started at this point. The routine has, has long gone. Yeah. We've now we've got Alan Carr, <laughs> we've got two red setters on the stage, chaos ensuing, Alan tying the, the bandanas around around the red setters' necks. The whole place going wild and applauding, the chap at the back is delighted, Alan then has to say, listen, thank you, I'm really delighted. I'm relieved that it's not anything other than, than, than those, it could have been. Um, the, the dogs make their exit and go upstairs. And then Alan starts the show, and, and it felt so magic. It was live, it was unscripted, 
basket was in our wonderful little theatre that, that people do love. Yeah. And it's because of those little things, I think, that we are kind of where we are in the world, and, and I know our place. Um, but but I, I've been here for 10 years, nigh on 10 years now, and uh, um, I've had some of the best, you know, days uh, in my life, in my um, old life, Gareth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say a thing. Well, well when, when I came to Borden, you'd just literally taken over, and seeing okay. it grow uh, and, and develop and flourish... Uh, under your leadership has been magnificent and marvellous. So, uh, you know, for what it's worth, hats off to you, Rob, uh, and long may you continue after this lockdown. Let's get the uh, booze flowing on when? September the... Saturday, September the 26th of Se September. Put that date in your diary, peeps, because you'll yeah. see a dinosaur opening a beer festival and oh, then please. doing a T-Rex song, <laughs> <laughs> if we can persuade them to. <laughs> Uh, live at the Phoenix Arts Centre in Borden. Now, this is the point of the show. We we usually in the last five minutes we do a a quick roundup of news stories that you would only get in a local paper. And our our great great friends down there at the Borden Herald or the Herald, uh, they 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 you know publish in Borden and elsewhere. Um, they have some stories that. I just every time I open the paper, there's a story that will make me laugh for a good, good five minutes. And this week is no exception. So we're going okay, to we're going to do we're going to do the, the the top stories quickly in the last five minutes. Did Stuart, you know? I know you're running, you're running out of time, Stuart. Yep. Can I give you one bit of good news? Go on, go on. Yes. But two quickly, two quickly ones is yesterday um, we were awarded funding from Arts Council England. Brilliant. Which is like, which is like you, you guys being poached by the BBC. It's that kind of ratification of who and how good you are. Yeah, so well, if the BBC are listening, I am uh, happy to go solo. <laughs> <laughs> and the second exciting right. thing is the refurbing of the building starts on the 22nd of July. <gasps> so we're locked down. I've been working with an architect and we'll start knocking walls through, make it open plan. Redo the seats, all these nice little things. Oh, wonderful! In July, so please, I just had to tell you both of those. That's brilliant. Arts Council, I'm excited, and the refer means we can start to really kind of go to the next point. Listen, I'll say no more. You, you've got to sum up. Wow. <laughs> what can I do? Well, how can I? Gone. How can I even yeah. follow that? But I will try with these three, possibly two local news stories, depending on time. Yeah. Um. Did you know at the weekend we missed the World Watercrest Eating Championships in Arlesford, no less? <laughs> Did you? Who knew that that was going on? In all this chaos that we live in, there is still there are still people that it was postponed to September, but Glenn Walsh, the reigning World Watercrest Eating Champion, yeah. hasn't let that stand in the way of defending <laughs> his title. <laughs> you know, well, the Watercrest line was 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 named after something. Well, I'm not going to give away anything. You have to go and read the paper. This is like okay. a little teaser. You know, if you want the full story, you can Google it. It's online. You don't have to invest anything. But the best news. So a friend of ours, a friend of the show, of someone we know tangentially, uh, a chap who owns Farnham Rants on Facebook, has found and uncovered a Second World War shelter in his garden. <laughs> That's exciting. I'd love to find an old shelter in my garden. Apparently there's been rumours circulating, swirling for many a year that there was an underground bunker with disused motorcycles in it. And after a long while, oh, he found this shelter in his garden. No sign of any motorcycles. So that might still be another bunker. Um, but yeah, uh, there, there's a great set of photographs of the stuff he found and the bunker itself uh, in the back garden. Um, but amazing, just local archaeology and history coming together there all in one go <laughs> in your back garden. Yeah, you know, who needs to leave your environs to do a bit of archaeology and uh, a bit of local history? That's there, it. there it is. What a wonderful and rich society we live in. <laughs> it's an amazing place. An amazing place. Unique. Bro Rob, thank you so much for coming along today and helping us to cheer up the uh, viewing, listening public. Thank you for listening if you have been. 
and uh, we return you to normality. Whatever that is for you, um, I'm not going to judge. It might be a dinosaur costume. It might be a loud suit. It might be a bad haircut. Whatever it is. <laughs> Gary? <we're... laughs> Guys, come on. <laughs> we'll see you very soon. Next week, 12 o'clock, same time, same place. Tune in and have a great week, people. And hopefully we've put a smile on your face for this week. Thanks very much, Rob. Cheers, Gareth. See you later. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.